I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another one of our tutorial videos. This is the first in the section on wet end processes and here we're going to talk about the learning outcomes, what you are expected to know at the end of this module. There are six learning outcomes for this particular topic. Number one, fibre dispersion. We need to know about the initial dispersion of fibres, how uh, dispersing virgin fibre is different from disturbing, uh, dispersing recycled fibre. Then we need to know about working on fibres, so the equipment used to work on fibres, beaters, conical refiners, disc refiners, etc. and the mechanism of refining. In the wet end we also remove contamination with screens and cleaners and uh, deaerating equipment. In the wet end we also measure flow and consistency and control flow and consistency. And we need to know about the flow box and the evolution of the flow box and finally the Fordrinia table. So for fibre dispersion, we'll be looking at things like um, low consistency pulpers, high consistency pulpers, um, drum pulpers, and of course not just pulpers, but also dispergers. This dispergers are interesting because they do not remove contamination from the system, but they do break them up and make them so small that they can't be seen. When we talk about working with fibres then we'll sort of do a bit of the history, we'll talk about the Chinese and the mortar and pestle and then we'll go through the developments, the stamp mill, the collar gang, uh, refiners, conical refiners, disc refiners, we'll look at the mechanism of work on a fibre, the three things that refiners and beaters do, which is shortening the fibre, externally fibrillating the fibre, and internally fibrillating the fibre. And we'll look at exactly how it does that. We'll look at the five steps of refining. Then at the wet end, we also remove contamination. And you can either remove contamination because of its size, it's a different size to a fibre, so for that we use screens. For the contamination that's the same size as the fibre, we need to do something different, so we use the density. Most contamination is more dense than a fibre, but things like polystyrene are less dense than a fibre, so we use these difference in densities in these cleaners to uh, separate the good from the bad. The tiniest of all contamination, of course, is ink particles. So we'll have a look about the de-inking process and the de-inking cells. And one of my particular hobby horses is air in stock. So we'll look at the deculator and the ways of removing air from stock. When we did water and chemical additives, we talked about chemical ways of removing air from stock, antiforms and deformers. The deculator is a mechanical way of removing air from stock. And then as we get closer to the machine, we need to be more careful about, we need to measure flow and control flow. We need to measure consistency and control consistency. So we'll look at modern forms of consistency measurement like unpolarized, like polarized light. We'll look at traditional ways of measuring consistency, where we use shear forces, and we'll have uh, just a very quick look at uh, how we measure flow rate using a, a magnetic flow meter. For the flow box, we'll certainly go through the history of flow boxes. We'll start with the fan pump that pushes stock forward towards the flow box. We'll look at the manifolds and then we'll look at the evolution of the flow box from the open flow box to the pressurized flow box 
to the um, final outlook, final view of the floor box, the uh, hydraulic floor box. And the last thing we'll talk about is the folder in your table itself. So we'll look at the four zones, the blending zone, the formation zone, the transition zone, and finally the high vacuum zone. We'll look at the equipment underneath the wire for removing water. We'll look at table rolls, foils, vacuum foils, uh, low vac boxes, high vac boxes. We'll look at the very last point where you can, re you can remove with, uh, with vacuum, which is the cooch roll, of course. But again, not all mills have a vacuum cooch roll. Some mills do have a solid cooch roll. Then there's only one roll on top of the wire, and that's the dandy. So how do dandies work? How do we keep them clean? What do they do? What do they not do? And then, of course, if we're talking about the uh, the wet end and the wire, we need to talk about the weaves, the different uh, materials of construction of farming fabrics and the different weaves that we have for farming fabrics. Okay, well, thank you for watching this uh, short introduction. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it a good guide. And I look forward to seeing you in the rest of this module. Bye for now.